Hello ladies and gentlemen, today we're looking at the Wellington Mark 1C Late. Now this thing is a great bomber, and by the way, just a disclaimer, I am a bit ill, so if I sound a bit groggy or anything like that, I'm going to try and keep the coughing to the minimum, and hopefully that works. But anyway, this is a fun bomber to play. So let's look at its stats. It has a battle rating of 3.3, which is okay as long as you get decent matchmaking and don't get matched with King Cobras and Yak-9Ts. It has a very, very, very slow max speed, but this is a medium bomber and it was used in night bombing, so basically you're not really looking for that max speed, but in a dive it can get up to about 600. It doesn't climb very well, but as long as you get decent matchmaking it doesn't really matter. So let's look at the two skins this thing has. It starts off with the standard, which looks like this. It is quite nice. It's obviously very RAF based. And then you get the Maltese Camouflage 1941. Now they look very similar. The only real difference is back here, you can see this camouflage here does not extend past here. And also the number has changed. But basically they are exactly the same camouflage. As you can see here, here's the camouflage on the standard, it is not there on the Maltese. Now, bombing wise, there is tons of different bomb loads on this and they are all great. You start off with the 10 250s and the 18 250s, 6 250s and 2000s, 9 500s, 2 torpedoes of 690 kilograms and that big 4,000 pound bomb which, to be honest, makes it look like a barrel underneath, which is quite interesting. Also, looking at these, you are going to struggle with this thing until you start unlocking stuff like the engine upgrade and the wings repair. Because, to be honest, because this thing is really slow and quite a big target, it is easy to hit. But once you start getting those upgrades, you will do well in this thing. Now, looking at the other Wellingtons, the Wellington Mark 1C has the same battle rating as the Mark 1C late. And the Mark 1C, the only real difference is, is that its gunners are over the wings on the fuselage instead of where on the late they are closer to the center of the fuselage so they have a better arc of fire. So that's always nice to see, isn't it? It has exactly the same guns and I believe the same bomb loads. But as I said, this thing really depends on the matchmaking you get because it does have a lot of problems. So let's get into an arcade battle. And here we are in the arcade battle. Now the thing is, this thing is much better in arcade than realistic, because you can actually manoeuvre it at low speeds in arcade. In realistic, not so much. The great thing about this thing is that it is a good base bomber. Taking out zones is very easy with those 9 500 pounders, or even that 4000 pound bomb if you don't really like the aiming. Now there is a lot of drawbacks to this machine. The biggest drawback for me is the fact that its uh, turrets are not great. Its turrets really lack, especially that they're only 7.7mm. So basically wherever anybody is attacking you, the most amount of turrets that you're going to be firing at once is three 7.7mm. Most of the time it's either going to be two or even one at the side. And that's about the same firepower as a biplane. So you can see with this thing having a BR of 3.3, there's going to be a lot of planes which will easily shoot you out of the air. Another problem with the gunners that I've found is that the back one is easily taken out because he is basically separated from the plane in his own little cage. So a lot of people in arcade especially will sit on your back and shoot your tail because this guy is basically straight on the tail. It's very easy to knock him out, so you need to put a lot of vitality in your gunners. And the problem is, if somebody's attacking you with 20mm or anything like that, it won't even matter how much vitality you've got in, he will get knocked out fast. Now a lot of things can be said about that. I mean, maybe you could say you shouldn't really rely on your turrets. But a direct comparison to the Wellington Mark 1C late and the Wellington Mark 1C is the B-25 Mitchell, and in my experiences, the B-25 
is a lot better at defending itself because it has that top turret and it also has the tail gunner. Now this thing only has the tail gunner and also on the Mitchell it has those 50 cals. So basically with this thing you are trading bomb load with firepower. You get more bomb load with this thing, you get £4,500 if you take that 9500 pounders instead of the 3000 that the Mitchell has, but you are trading defence. This thing cannot really defend itself in a fight, and you are going to be coming up against a few climbers if you're unlucky, such as the 90s, 9Ks, King Cobras, obviously Air Cobras have a BR of 3.3, you're going to be coming up against LA5s and Yaks, which have a BR of 2.7 and 3. So they're going to be a bit of a problem. And also, you may even get a bit of flak from enemy bombers, which is what happens here with this H6K. The Heinkel leaves as it should, but the H6K decides to stick about. Now, with that cannon on the back of it, you do have to watch out, because obviously it's a 20mm, it can really tear you up. But it seems like, at least in the recent update or recent patch, they've kind of fixed the damage model of this thing, so it doesn't just get one shot. Still, the pilot does have a large hitbox, and even getting shot in the tail can get rid of your pilot, which is a bit of a problem that the plane still has, and it would be nice to see that fixed, to be honest, because it is very, very annoying when you're flying this thing, and somebody shoots your tail, and somehow your pilot is dead. Now I'm guessing that's a problem with the hitbox, or maybe the pilot is just too large. But I'm guessing, I'm guessing that in real life, the pilot of this thing obviously had a lot of cover. Because the thing is, the plane is replaceable in real life, but the pilot isn't. All of the training has gone to waste if that pilot dies. So you've got to make sure that the pilot survives. The plane can go down, but as long as the pilot gets out and all of its crew, it means you can get into another bomber and attack once again. Now, because this thing is lightly armoured, you are sometimes going to have to defend on your team to defend you. And, to be honest, in arcade that's never, ever a good idea. Because people would rather go after fighter kills and in that bee's nest in the centre then come and help you. So a lot of times you're going to be isolated and away from everybody, and to be honest, that can be a great thing. If you hang around the edges of the map and just pick off zones or pick off ground targets, then you can be away from the enemy. And that is a good thing in this bomber. You want to be as far away as possible from where the actual action is, because it is weak. Its engines are large, its wings are even larger, but its engines set on fire easily, but in my experience, at least when diving, you still can put those out. I mean, it is tough, but in a steep dive, and this thing getting up to 600 kilometers an hour, you can dive and get rid of it. But still, it's not foolproof. It doesn't have self-sealing tanks, to my knowledge, so it won't be able to easily put them out. But it can be forgiven. I have a really bad love-hate relationship with this thing. It can be forgiven because of its bomb load. Its bomb load is absolutely wonderful when taking out anything, and it seems since update 1.37, the splash damage on bombs has been nerfed, so it is better to go for zones where you can easily get hit instead of wasting your ammo on ground targets such as medium tanks where I've hit them on the dome, on the turret, and they haven't died. So, in the Wellington, always go after zones. It isn't a fast bomber. It is not going to pick up tons of speed in a dive. It will be able to get away from aircraft, but by diving, you are giving aircraft at the bottom a huge window of opportunity to shoot you, which unfortunately I have to do here because the A20G is on my ass. And by doing that, this thing is not a small bomber. It is not a dive bomber, it is a proper medium bomber. It has a large bomb load, it's supposed to be used at high altitude, and once you dive, you are basically opening yourself up to the elements, or opening, opening yourself up to the enemy. Now as you can see, that A20 did hit me a little bit, and I didn't take too much damage, but I still took quite a hefty amount from those 50 cals. Can you imagine if a 37mm was shooting at you? 
There's been a lot of times where it's one shot to the fuselage, and the fuselage has snapped in half for me. So, you've got to always watch out for that. But the thing is, with any bomber, that can happen. But with the Wellington, it seems to be prone to happen. So, this gameplay shows that it still can take a beating, but eventually it will go down. I just wish this thing was better armoured. The two 7.7s on the back in that little turret do not do anything, and stuff like this is going to happen all the time, where your engines get taken out, you get set on fire, or your pilot gets knocked out. Basically all three happen to me here. So that just shows what can happen. But even though I got shot down, I did make a ton of lions, which is what this thing is good at. It's good at making money. So you can actually use it to farm lions and farm research points, if you so desire. And because of that, it means that you can, as long as you hit a zone or destroy it, you can easily repair your plane. I mean, I believe the repair on this was 1700 and I made over 20,000. So it's much easier to repair and you can keep taking it out and keep getting lines for it. So, that's the arcade battle discussion. Now, we'll get on to the live commentary. Hello ladies and gentlemen, so this is the live commentary part of the review. I do have Sharplight with me here and hopefully he's going to be giving me some support. Because, to be honest, flying this thing without support is a death trap, especially at a BR of 3.3. So hopefully it goes okay. We do have another Wellington and a B-25 in this. I'm just going to circle around and wait for the fighter support. Were you in an Air Cobra? Yep. Yeah. Okay, cool beans. Wow, we have a lot of Wellingtons. It looks like we're going base bombing. <laughs> And to be honest, looking at the enemy team, there isn't many climbers. Like, maybe if the Yak-7B really cares, and maybe if the BF-109 cares, but apart from that, we should be okay. What do you think? Go after pillboxes or the bases? Well, if uh, the teammates are uh, going after bases, then go after the bases. Yeah. What are you carrying, actually? Uh, nine five hundreds. Okay, that that could be a little bit tricky, but. Uh... Oh no, I've I've got a fast spacebar finger, so it's okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I use it basically because it has the. Uh, well, it's bigger than the four thousand pounder, right? Yes. Uh, it's the biggest bomb load the Wellington has, and even though they nerfed the. Bomb spread, would you the bomb splash, I suppose you call it, in 1.37? It's still pretty useful at taking out pillboxes. And there's the Air Cobra. What a lovely machine. You probably won't get any points this match. I bet you this will be the first match in like a day where nobody will climb. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's okay. A lot of people on the forum always suggest, like, um, if a fighter uh, flies near a bomber, he should get, like, uh, points. And, and uh, it, these, the problem with these kind of ideas is that they could be exploited. And uh, yeah. we could just, you and me, fly to the other side and I would, I would be getting points. So Yeah, it's a bit of a tricky one, really. Like... Uh, in air combat, you didn't get a kill by supporting a bomber. <laughs> by just being well, next to him. If if you save a bomber, if you shoot a, an airplane that has uh, shot a, a bomber, you get 500 silver right away. It's a uh, bomber rescue uh, award, so... Yeah. But, yeah, people don't notice that, so... Yeah, I suppose you also get the fighter rescuer, though, if you rescue yeah. a fighter. Yeah, you get that also. And you get the ground strike, uh, ground target uh, rescue and all kind of stuff. Yeah, that B-25 has decided it's a great idea to dive on that IL-2. I don't really know what he's doing. <laughs> uh, good luck, he'll take some 20mm to the face. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Maybe some rockets. <laughs> right, first bomb load off, I'm going to turn. Right. Maybe I'll uh, go after these uh, guys. Yeah, go for it. So watch out for that young Kray 87. He shot me down earlier, uh, D5. It's the one with the two cannons, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. 
the D5 and uh, what really scares me is the uh, G. The G is scary. One bomb load just destroyed that base, by the way. I can't be right. Somebody else must have bombed it. Well, now, the, the main advantage of this thing is basically it's bomb loads. I mean, when you compare it to any other uh, battle-rated bomber around this area, I mean, obviously the direct comparison is the uh, Mitchell, the B-25J. Yep. And uh, that has a maximum bomb load of 3,000, where it, ha it carries three 1,000-pound mm -hmm. bombs. So mm -hmm. it's easy to take out bases because it's only three bombs that you have to put down. But this thing... It has up to 4,500 pounds, so yeah. <clears throat> it's a lot better, to be honest. All right, where's well, this Mitchell going? When I was uh, maxing out my uh, Wellington, I, in arcade I did it. Yeah. I only used uh, 4,000, just <laughs> for, for uh, more simple, uh, you know, like, just drop it very simple and then avoid the fighters and uh, try again and yeah. reload and try again and... I, I didn't go for the maximum load, but like for the easiest uh, load. Yeah, when I uh, when I was maxing it out, I did exactly the same thing, like uh, d destroying bases with the four thousand pounder. But then when I was trying to get the skin, I used either the eighteen two fifties or the nine five hundreds, basically because you need ground targets to get the skin, right? Yes. Yeah. You, then then you go for the maximum number, and you don't care if. Uh, they are like um, AA or something that doesn't give a high uh, RP and uh, silver. You just go for the highest number. Yeah. Which makes sense. I mean, hitting p even hitting pillboxes at this altitude with the 500 pounds is still pretty hard because of that splash damage problem. I mean, you'd yeah. think a 500 pound bomb would have a decent splash. Well, not in this game at the moment. And well, uh... If we go like historically, uh, a five hundred pound bomb wouldn't do anything on a on a bunker. Actually, you know, to be to be accurate, yeah. a concrete bunker wouldn't hurt it. But it's, uh, I mean, the 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 problem here is hitting the thing, not the 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 force of the explosion. Because clearly, if you can hit it, if you can drop it uh, on the bunker, it will destroy it. You just the aim, the problem here. So. Yeah, and I find that when I use the Wellington, whenever I drop a bomb, it, for some reason, always veers to the left slightly. And I don't really know why. So if you're bombing, like, a, a base with these 9500s, um, after the end of the bombing run, you'll be slightly to the left for some weird reason. And I've never had that with any other bomber except this one. Yeah. Uh, it looks like I'm pretty safe here, so you can go after what you like. There is a DO down there. No, I, uh, I kind of... Uh, I grew out of arcade, so... <laughs> <laughs> There's not a lot of joy in it for me. Yeah. Uh, I'm... I don't know, like... I love always going back to arcade. When I've, If I've had, like, three terrible games in Realistic, especially Flying Bombers, like mm -hmm. the Wellington, then going back to arcade is kind of like a saving grace. Yeah. Because at least I can get some points. Because sometimes in realistic, especially flying the Wellington, when you put up against King Cobras and you're trying to fly the Wellington, it's a death trap. Like, yeah. you can't do anything. No, uh, if, in realistic, bombers are, uh, are, a, are a joke. You, you shouldn't fly bombers. I mean, I flew a lot of bombers, so I can tell you. I uh, flew uh, Japanese bombers and uh, British bombers and... Uh, and like attack uh, the Peshka, you know, the P3 and the... Well, the, like the, the heavy fighter kind of bombers are all right. Because at least they have like forward-facing guns. Like the Mitchell is pretty decent and realistic because you can take out AA quite easily. But big medium bombers like the Wellingtons and stuff like that. Wait a second, where'd that guy go? I just saw a yak somewhere. Where? Uh, he's behind me. I think. He might be below me. My gunners might just be freaking out a bit. Alright, I'm gonna climb. You're, you're going away from me? Yeah, I'm, I'm bombing the airfield because everything else has really been taken out. <laughs> okay. But I'm turning now, so... Where, where is the, the yak? 
I think he's gone away. He's dived. He's the CYS guy. He's, uh, uh, he's really down. Okay. Yeah, this review is going to be hard because, well, I feel really ill. So we'll see how it goes. It should be okay. But to be honest, the Wellington is a bit of a weird one. I mean, it's nice that this thing has the same battle rating as a uh, a normal Wellington Mark One. I. I mean, there's not really any differences between this one and the Mark One, except for where the gunners are on the sides. They're not on the wings. Well, they're they're not. Uh, well, they're still on the fuselage, but they're in a different place. They're more centralized, so they have a bigger arc of fire. But apart from that, they're basically exactly the same plane. Like, there isn't much difference. I believe they have the same bomb loads, don't they? I believe so, yeah. Yeah. So, to be honest, you might as well go for the late, uh, just because of that uh, side gunners. And the problem is you're going to have to unlock the late to unlock the Mark III. I think that's how it works now, especially in the, the new system. Jeez, this airfield's going to take a lot of bombing. There's no way I'm going to finish it off. <laughs> Just a tiny bit, though. Yeah. Flipping eye. Oh, wow. Right. Okay. <laughs> well, that's that over with. That was a decent match. I didn't get a lot of credits in it because, to be honest, the other players on my team beat me to the punch. Yeah. But still, I mean, 5,000 lines is nothing to joke about. Decent research. And I don't have to repair this thing at all because nobody came after me. So let's get into some realistic battle gameplay with this thing. Now, it's safe to say in my mind that this thing handles like a hippopotamus on LSD in realistic. For some reason, the flight model is a bit wrong. So even if you don't move this thing, at low speeds, it's going to move itself. And what I mean by that is, if you don't touch the controls, the wings are going to tilt left and tilt right and go crazy, and the rudder is never going to settle. And I don't really know where that is. It may be down to the flight model being a bit broken, and also, because not many people fly bombers in realistic, it might be down to that as well. Maybe that's why it hasn't been fixed. Or maybe just the fact because it's a large bomber going at a low speed. I mean, most of the time I'm going around or below 200 kilometers an hour, which isn't fast, especially when climbing. So maybe wind and stuff like that would affect the Wellington in that way and make it hard to control. So anyway, let's get into some history and what Gaijin have to say for this plane. So this is what Gaijin have put about the Wellington Mark 1T late. In May 1940, the Vickers Wellington bomber was included in the list of aircraft declared a high priority by the United Kingdom's Ministry of Aircraft Production. Full-scale production of the Mark 1C model started in April 1940. This version said the final goodbye to the retractable ventral turret, favouring guns placed on the aircraft's sides instead. In place of the Fraser Nash FN-25 turret, the plane featured two side blisters consisting of 7.7mm Vickers Class K machine guns with 483 rounds each. So they are the ones dedicated to the sides of the fuselage. And they are seven flat pan magazines with standard capacity. The Mark 1C bombers of later series had the Vickers machine guns on the aircraft sides replaced with 7.7mm Colt Browning Mark II.303 belt-fed machine guns with 600 rounds each. So they had more rounds, but they were the same calibre. But I have heard that Browning machine guns were better than Vickers machine guns, but that might just be hearsay or personal preference. They also say, The nose and rear turrets remained the same as they were in the Mark 1A model. The standard payload was not changed either, with a load capacity of 4,500 pounds or 2,041 kilograms. The standard bomb load was 9,500 pounders or 2,000 pounders. 
the aircraft's engine was left unchanged. So basically, they kept the bomb loads, they kept the engines, the only thing they really changed was the machine guns and where they were situated on the plane. As I said before, the only real difference in the game between the Mark 1C and the Mark 1C late is on the late version, the side gunners are pushed more towards the back of the aircraft in the center of the fuselage. So, as I said, giving them a better arc of fire. Now, even though they're only 7.7mm, it's still good. By the way, I'm bringing two realistic games which show the two different sides of the Wellington and why I love it and why I absolutely despise it sometimes. <laughs> so this is the first one, obviously. It's on Sicily, I believe, so it is against Germany. And when you're against Germany and British bombers, you are basically screwed from the start because the Germans have BF 109s which can climb very high. A lot of them have good calibre guns, especially the F series. 20mm will tear you apart and they have enough ammo to sink you. But the main problem that the Wellington has in this is, as I said, that pilot problem. There is a bug. It must be a bug. There is no way that the Wellington fuselage was so flimsy that a shot could get through the whole thing and kill the pilot. No bomber designer was that stupid in design. You basically have to shoot through a person in his turret and the tail, the tail itself, including the rudder, the whole fuselage where two gunners are situated, and also through some steel plating to hit the pilot. So there is something really wrong here. And on this map also there are no zones. So the Wellington is kind of deemed useless, and in realistic that will happen sometimes, where you basically get maps without zones, so you have to make do. And also you will see me lining up a bombing run with this thing, and the hippopotamus on drugs will show you how hard it is to control to even hit pillboxes with 500 pounders from this level. This is why when I see Wellingtons in realistic, most of the time they dive. They get as fast as possible, get the bomb loads off and run away. Because at high altitudes, this thing is impossible to bomb with unless you're going after a zone. So, let's look at another part that guy didn't say. A special model, the Type 423, was based on the Wellington Mark 1C. It was able to deliver one 4,000 pounder, an extra heavy cookie Mark 1 or Mark 2 bomb to the target. To accomplish this, the central bomb bay doors were removed and the bomb bay itself was modified. The defensive armament remained the same. So that's basically the barrel that you get when you unlock the 4,000 pounder. And obviously the bomb bay doors were taken off, according to uh, how Gaijin has depicted it in this game, to fit that 4,000 pounder. Now that must have meant, in real life, this thing could have been a death trap if something attacked it from below. Can you imagine hitting that thing? While the Wellington was on, I'm pretty sure there must be a lot of stories where this has happened to Wellington pilots, where their bombs have just exploded, or leaked, or something has gone wrong, because that bomb was very exposed at the bottom of the plane. They also talk about the Wellington being a torpedo bomber, and I will talk about that after I go through this, but this game does not lend itself for the Wellington to be a torpedo bomber because you have to get down to 40 meters altitude to get those torpedoes off. And to be honest, getting down to that altitude is tough anyway in the Wellington, and also with destroyers and stuff shooting you, you are a large target, and with one hit you can be down. The wings are not that strong in this thing, even with extra cover. Now, as you see, I'm lining up these shots, but this thing is all over the place. It is really, really struggling to stay on target, and therefore I'm struggling to bomb and get my bombs off in a good place. You can see how it's swaying. I'm not doing that. I'm basically countering the swaying, so if I wasn't countering it, it would be even worse. This is the main problem I have with the Wellington when it comes to realistic. If you can't bomb a zone, you are basically useless. And now the BF-109s have joined the party, and because none of my men have come, they can't support me. Now this BF-109F4 comes in, knocks my pilot out from behind, makes sense, makes sense, 
and there's nothing I can do about it. It is an F4 Trop, which is a higher battle rating than my own, but what can you do? So this is the second match. It was a mixture of Americans and British against the Russians in a alternate history map on Berlin. So that means that there's zones. It means I can do something. It also means that we face the Russians. The Russians I found unrealistic. Whenever I'm flying with them, we win. Whenever I'm flying against them, we lose. So bear that in mind. Especially when on my team there's a Corsair and a Thunderbolt, who were two very nice guys, very supportive. I uh, just want to give them a shout out for being just great guys and sticking with me till the end. And uh, I'll probably be squatting up with them, to be honest, in uh, later videos because they were so nice. And uh, give them a bit of a shout out, maybe uh, show their names so people can join and talk to them. So let's talk a bit more about what Gaijin say about the Wellington. The Wellington served not only as a bomber, the missions that it performed for the RAF Coastal Command were no less important. In January 1941, the Mark 1C began to be used as an anti-submarine patrol aircraft, although no design changes were made. In December 1941, the first torpedo bomber conversions were made. Interesting, using something as large as a Wellington to look for submarines, you'd think that you would prefer to use some kind of spy plane such as the OS-2U, but obviously not. The Wellington Mark 1C TB torpedo bomber was identical to the Mark 1C as far as its engine and defensive armament goes, but could carry up to two Mark 12 torpedoes inside. So I believe they're simulated in this game with the two torpedoes that you can carry. As I said, they are basically useless in the game, it's very hard to use them, and by the time you set your torpedoes off, there's probably somebody who's already bombed the uh, ships with a dive bomber, or even a Heinkel, I've seen a lot. So, the first special anti-submarine model designed for the RAF Coastal Command was the Type 428 Wellington GR Mark 8 TB, which I believe stands for Torpedo Bomber. Its structure had the airframe of the later Mark 1C series. The GR Mark 8 TB Scout Bomber began production in the spring of 1942 in three versions. One version with radar, one version with a retractable searchlight in place of the nose turret, and one version as a long-distance scout with extra fuel tanks installed in the bomb bay. All three, starting with the 66th production aircraft, were equipped with a torpedo mount like the Mark 1C TB model. The Wellington torpedo bombers were used for the first time in the Mediterranean Sea at the end of December 1941. Anti-submarine models began to patrol the North Sea in May 1942, and the first German submarine destroyed by these planes was sunk on July 6, 1942. 2,547 Mark 1C aircraft were produced, including 138 Mark 1C torpedo bombers and 271 GR Mark 8 torpedo bombers. So they basically used a lot for torpedo bombing, which isn't simulated well in this game, and also a scout, which seems crazy to me. I mean, this is a big aircraft. If you want a scout, surely you would want something which is smaller, which cannot be identified as closely, but obviously I don't know what I'm talking about. Now, getting back to the game, I am going for the point or the zone which is furthest away from the enemy. For obvious reasons, I don't want to get shot down by those LA-5s. There seems to be a squadron of LA-5s, and at this tier, they will clean up shop. They can climb higher than the Thunderbolt at the moment, and the Corsair can't really do anything because it loses so much speed in turns that the LA-5s can just pick them apart. Also, uh, both sides were filled with bots, so that's a thing to think about. But to be honest, I don't think it would have made much of a difference. We also had a Mitchell who decided to dive. He did get some bombs off, but also he died very rapidly. Now, it's weird. When there's zones in... Uh, realistic battles, I believe diving is the wrong option. 
But if you're in something like the Wellington and there aren't zones, maybe it is better to dive. Maybe it is better to get your bombs off on maybe a line of tanks and then get out of there. Because, to be honest, it is tough, as you saw in that last video, going after ground targets in this Wellington. It does not handle well at low speeds. And by low speeds, I mean anything which is below its maximum speed and realistic. It struggles with that. And it struggles with a lot of things. As I said, the firepower isn't good enough. Obviously, in realistic, it's even more amplified, as we saw with that BF-109. It really depends on how well your aim is, but once again, it has the firepower of a biplane. And when you have a biplane's firepower against an LA-5, it's not going to do much, because obviously Russians are made out of Stalin wood in this game. So, the only thing you can really do is maybe catching them on fire if you're lucky. Now, at this point in the game, we'd already basically lost. Everybody was taken out except for this Thunderbolt who was trying to run away, and I was trying to give him advice, but it gets to a point where there's not really much advice you can give him. He has three LA-5s on his ass. Basically, the LA-5s climbed higher, and it was one Corsair and one Thunderbolt versus three of them, and they got picked apart, not... Med not uh, methodically, it's very easy in an LA-5 to take out Americans in this game at the moment, so they need to fix that, and I don't really know how. Maybe make the flight models correct for the Americans, that would be nice. And maybe fix this damn thing, because it handles like a barge, or as I said, a hippopotamus on drugs. It doesn't fly well in realistic at all. And even at high speed, I can do maneuvers such as loop-de-loops, which you will see later on, which you should not be able to do in realistic. This is a medium bomber. It was designed for high-altitude night bombing. Therefore, it should be sturdy at high altitudes at maybe low speeds, or at least mediocre speeds. The rate of climb on this thing is so shocking, there is no point in climbing in it in realistic. You might as well stay at the same level and just try and gain speed, just in case somebody gets on your ass so you can dive. Then you'll have more speed. But, you know, I suppose it. I shouldn't really bitch and whine because of that bomb load. The bomb load is very nice. But it does have a lot of problems. And in realistic, as I said, they're amplified. The turning on this thing is gargantuan, it's like turning a barge in a harbour half its size. The engines are not powerful enough, maybe that's down to the design of the Wellington, or maybe it's actually just down to how it's modelled in the game. The wingspan is massive, and even if a few bullets gets into your wing, it will rip off, and that will be you done for. The fuselage is a huge target, and because it is weak, it seems to be strengthened after the last patch, but still, it's still a struggle. It still can get one shot by even 20 millimeters of the LA-5. The back gunner, as you will see, is not good at all, and it frustrates me every time when I'm trying to shoot somebody. So overall, with the Wellington, they were produced between 1936 and 1945. They were primarily used by the RAF, the Royal Canadian Air Force, the Fleet Air Arm, and the Polish Air Forces which is quite interesting. Its first flight was the 15th of June 1936, and it was introduced in mainstream production in October 1938, and then retired in March 1953. It was produced between the years of 1936 and 1945. The numbers built, there was 11,461, which is a lot, but the thing is you do also have to realise that that includes a lot of the variants, as Gaijin talked about when they were talking about the Wellington, you talked about a torpedo variant and also a scout variant, there was also many transport planes and stuff like that, there wasn't actually that many bomber variants, there was five coastal command variants, and let's see... There was about eight or nine bomber variants, two transport variants, three trainer variants, and millions of experimental and conversion variants, which are always interesting. It was also used by the Australians, the Czechoslovakians, the French, 
even Germany, they use captured ones, which is simulated in this game with the premium uh, Wellington that you can get. It was used by the Greeks, the Kiwis, uh, the Portuguese, the South Africans. It was used by basically everyone. This one was tossed around like a common you-know-what. Also, most of the stuff is historically accurate in this game. Well, at least the facts are, such as the maximum speed in this is only 378 kilometers an hour, or 235 miles per hour. Its range is actually quite large, 2,550 miles, which is pretty decent. Uh, its service ceiling was 18,000 feet, which is pretty high, which is always nice, especially when you're night bombing, you don't want to get shot down by that AA. And stuff like the wingspan and the length of this thing were very large and very well modelled in the game. The, the actual model for the Wellington in this game is lovely. It is really nice. I really enjoy the Wellington in this game, just because I have historical ties with it. The fact that I was able to see one at a very young age, a restored one, it was absolutely lovely to me to, to see one and to walk around it. But also, for historical reasons, I am from Yorkshire. Uh, a book that I'm reading right now is Yorkshire Airfields of the Second World War, and a lot of them uh, were bomber commands because obviously Yorkshire is in the north of England so they were used to attack east and then attack uh, France and Germany when they had to oh and by the way that was an SU-2 I believe if I'm looking right and what happened there was he put a few shots into my tail and knocked out my tail gunner he is a bot a bot knocked out my tail gunner <laughs> So yeah, that just shows how terrible this thing is at dealing with stuff like that. The turrets are terrible, and what I actually did on this map, because everyone else was taken out, I circled around to the back of the airfield because I thought it would be sneaky, but I did think the LA-5s were actually at the base, so it wasn't really going to make much of a difference. And, lo and behold, I was unfortunately correct. It looks like that... Uh, spot spotted me and then the group of LA-5s came to hunt me but they underestimated the Wellington the Wellington is fierce the Wellington is alive for no apparent reason sometimes it does well sometimes it doesn't it's a bit of a hit and miss sometimes if you can get your bombs off in realistic well done if you can't well it was just a bad day at the office that's how I see it there's the first LA-5 he spotted me so what can I do? I can do some stupid stuff. Can you imagine doing this in real life? I really don't think so. So much for realistic. So I try to do a loop. Can't fully do it, but now this LA-5 is putting shots into me, but he hasn't hit my engines really, which is the main thing. If I keep my engines and my tail, I'm fine. If he hits my fuselage and it goes black, not too bad. I lower my speed. He has too much speed coming out of the dive when he's following me. So then I can boost my engines and he goes past me and I can get some shots and critical I believe I got his engine so that's some of the stupid stuff you can do in this thing <laughs> you can slow down because this thing has such a low speed while cruising so 190 to 200 kilometers an hour you can do stupid things like that and LA-5s can actually outrun you a lot of people underestimate the firepower of bombers and especially the Wellington like the Wellington doesn't have great firepower. I mean, it's pretty obvious that it doesn't have great firepower as shown in this video. But still, I'm able to take out an LA-5, take out its engine, make it leave me alone, but that does mean that there is still two of them after me, and maybe a third, I can't really remember. But I can basically use this thing at higher speeds as a fighter. I can't outturn them, but I can slow down, I can speed up, and I can disorientate them. Which is very funny to say, since I'm flying a huge barge of a medium bomber. But when this thing doesn't have any bombs in it, it somehow becomes maneuverable. So maybe it's not maneuverable when you carry the 4,000 or the 4,500 pound bomb loads. Everything else, it might be fine. But it isn't. Without bombs, <laughs> it does well. With bombs, it handles terribly. 
So at least when you've got your bombs away, maybe it's easier to handle. But by that point in a realistic battle, it doesn't really matter anyway. Because once you've got your bombs off, it really depends on your team. As you saw in this match, I kind of got screwed. My team was destroyed very fast. There wasn't much I could do about it. I mean, I couldn't really support them. I'm in a bomber, for God's sake. Which is why a lot of people see bombers as useless in historical battles. But if I could have landed, if I could have got another go, then I could have destroyed a zone, which would have been nice, but unfortunately, Sailor V. And there goes down the LA-5. <laughs> I actually got a kill with a Wellington, which is much more than most of my team. My team did not do well in this match, and that may be because you could say uh, because of the Russians being a bit overpowered, uh, especially the LA-5s in this match, or it could have just been the players who I was playing with. But anyway, I think that match went pretty well. I mean, I got a kill, I got my bombs off, which is... Most of the time you can't really say that in the Wellington, especially with the kill part. Getting your bombs off, you can at least get some of them off uh, before getting shot down. But most of the time you're going to struggle against those fighters. Mainly because of your guns. Mainly because you are pretty much lightly armoured in this version of the game. But pretty much because of other stuff as well. So, if we look at the battle screen. I came first, which I find quite hilarious. And I did make even in a loss, a decent amount of lines which I could use to uh, repair my plane and still make some. So, down to the final review. Or verdict, I suppose. So, for the verdict, let's look at the strengths and weaknesses I've found with the Wellington Mark 1C late. So, the strengths. It's great and versatile bomb loads. They are brilliant. You can basically use them for ground strike, zones, even torpedoes sometimes, which are always fun. Another one is that you can use torpedoes if you are a skilled bomber pilot. Torpedoes are useful on the Wellington. If you're going after large destroyers or cruisers or something like that, but you do have to get down to that 40 meter altitude, which can be a bit of a problem. It can also knock out a base or a zone in two bombing runs using that 4,000 or 4,500 pound bomb load, which is brilliant. It means that taking out zones is easy in this thing. The Wellington can pick up a lot of speed in a dive and may evade enemy fighters. This is like a lot of dive bombers and medium bombers, but it's still nice that the Wellington can do it is able to do a loop, which is a fantastic sight. Now this is a bit of a jokey one, but I tell you, get into a Wellington and dive and do a loop. It looks absolutely amazing and it is a strength because you can actually get on the back of enemy fighters chasing you, which is quite funny. So, the weaknesses. The engines either die or set on fire way too easily when shot by even 7.7mm machine guns. I have struggled with the engines on this thing, and even if one engine goes down, it makes this thing very hard to fly. The pilot hitbox is wrong, and you can still kill a pilot of a Wellington by shooting its tail. As shown in that realistic battle, there is something wrong with the hitbox, and hopefully they change it soon. It is a large aircraft, so it is susceptible to AA, and fighters easily spotting it in the sky. AA is one of the banes of the Wellington, but the thing is, in realistic battles, you can even spot aircraft without seeing the names, and because the Wellington is such a large target, it is easy to see from a mile away. The cruising speed is very low, and the rate of climb is so slow that it is an easy target to a decent bomber hunter. That is a problem with the plane, not with how Gaijin has implemented it in the game, but because it was used mainly as a night fighter in the Second World War, so it didn't really need a decent rate of climb or a large speed. In realistic, it is hopeless, because it handles like a rhino on crack. I'm pretty sure in these two realistic battles I've shown in this, this proves my point. So, thank you for watching my review of the Wellington Mark 1C late, and have a great day.